Thank you for the thank you for the sub, man. Appreciate it. Uh, the next session coming up. Let's see, is MMR. That last guy was 3K, but he was playing on his like alternate account because his main account was uh Thanks, in man. low prio. Uh, thank you, Peaky Perp. Didn't you already sub? Oh no, you were you're the guy I referred to earlier when you said something. I don't remember what it was. What did you say? Were you the one that copy pasted the zero thing? I don't remember, but I definitely remember uh, talking to you earlier. Nice, I got the ah shit right. But BSJ, I don't want to be roasted, is what he's thinking. I'm ready when you are. Okay, we'll try calling him again. I swear to God, like 95% of you don't know how to use Steam Chat. So I don't even know if he's a. Uh, oh. Sup? Hi. How you doing, man? Uh, good. I was just watching your stream. Nice. What's that accent you got going there? Uh, Asian accent. Oh, it sounded like Australian or something. I've just been so used to Australians that I'm coaching. Okay. Uh, what are, what's the MMR are we dealing with today? No, no. Last time I calibrated, I was on 2.2k. Okay. So what are you here for, man? I'm actually here to improve my gameplay because uh, I find I have very bad farming patterns and I tend to not join team fights in which I can make a difference in. Okay. So you were just watching that last coaching session? Or were you, did yeah. you stop watching at some point? No, I, I watched the whole thing. Okay. So a lot of it's probably going to apply to you as well. Um, yeah. But I just talked about with the decision making and items and like when to join team fights in terms of like if i go here is there an objective stuff like that so go ahead and are you wanting to do a replay or a live game uh, i would actually prefer a game okay then go ahead and invite me to your yeah. party yeah sure your profile picture is lovely uh -oh. Uh, I just got that somewhere, randomly. Nice, nice. Okay. So uh, we'll see what happens today, man. If you have any specific questions leading in, uh, let me know. Otherwise, uh, go ahead and queue All up, right. and we can uh, get this show on the road. Why would people buy um, Silver Edge against a Timber and Axe? Well, first off, they both had Blade Mails. So Silver Edge makes their Blade Mail do 50% damage. So you can actually hit them. Oh. And then second oh. off, uh, Timber Saw has reactive armor. And Axe is like 90% reliant on his spin. So he won't spin if you Silver Edge him. So that is why if you buy a Shadow Blade, like you don't have to buy a Silver Edge, but the fact is that that Viper went for a Shadow Blade. So if you invest in a Shadow mm -hmm. Blade against two heroes that are very bad against, I mean three heroes, even Sniper loses two passives as well. And Zeus, I guess, loses a passive. What's their fifth hero? Techies? Techie loses his uh, will to live or something, I don't know. Mm. But yeah, basically against Axe especially, uh, it's really good. So if there was no Viper and instead there was a Slark, would Slark, was, would Slark also invest in a Silver Edge? Yeah, I would go, I, if I'm Slark against Axe, I always go Silver Edge, almost always first item. Um, because if he's going to blink call me, as long as I'm in Invis, I'm fine. Because if he blink calls me and I'm, and I'm Silver Edged Invis, then I'll come out of it by hitting him with my Silver Edge. And, mm -hmm. and he'll be Silver Edge, so he won't spin. And I won't take any damage. All right. Dude. Some serious memeing on this, on this profile. 
yeah, I can see that. At least this guy is talkative. Yeah, the last guy was sucked. Hope he's still here. No, I'm kidding. Okay, <laughs> so let's uh, let's get back to business. Yeah, Twitch chat doesn't like the sound of me eating. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to balance between not muting myself and eating. Yeah, people forget to realize that if I'm streaming from like five until midnight, that my body, while being vastly superior, requires uh, food just like everyone else. That was a joke, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah. That was that was a joke. I hate Peruvians. You hate Peruvians? Don't we all, man? I mean, I played on the C What's server. The I don't know. Oh, real quick, I recommend you pick your hero real quick. I recommend you pick your hero real quick and take your lane real quick. Real fast. There you go. Nice. I spam Slark. Probably a little too much. Don't we all? Just the home spread. Let's hope they don't pick an anti mage. Wait, um, are you taking that off lane? Who's taking off lane? We got safe lane slart. Hey sniper, would you want to go somebody else go off lane? I guess off lane sniper might work. <sighs> Maybe we'll just do a two-one-two strat here, boys. Yeah, dude, offlane sniper. I'm ready. Okay, I like this guy. I like this dry hobo rub down. It's a good name. <laughs> it's really important when it comes to starting items. Just like with that last guy, thinking about like all the scenarios that could happen in your lane. Are you going to be taking a lot of harass damage, like that kind of stuff? Are you going to need a stick? Are you going to want to go poor, poor man's? That kind of thing. So let's Touch see, what, 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 are, what are we against? So I, I generally, obviously, in a regular ring game, you know your matchup before so you're in the game. We'll so I'd wait until you see their lineup. Slardar, Looks like an Axe or a Night Stalker, yeah. both of which you're going to want to trade with a lot. So I would actually go two sets of Tengos and a Salve here. And then what that means for you is if it's Night Stalker, I would level Essence Shift level 1 and hit him a bunch. If it's Axe, just... Uh, mm -hmm. You know, look to look to go on him only when it's a potential kill or you're going to deal a lot of damage to him. Is pretty much what I'm going to say about that. Axe is one of those heroes where otherwise you kind of just play the lane passively. But at the same time, your goal is to get to level 6 without running out of regen. And the reason why I had you buy so much regen is because against Axe, he pushes the lane, he spins, all that stuff. You're going to take a lot of damage. But now, if Night Stalker's in lane and you have so much regen... You want to level Essence Shift and harass him a bunch because you have so much regen, you can afford to trade with him a bunch. But buying all that regen and then playing passively against Night Stalker would be a waste. No, he's off lane. Yeah, Beastmaster, he can go in the jungle. This ain't no snowball fight. Yeah, they went bottom, so we got free top room. Hmm. Oh, would it be so far? So it looks like it's Night Stalker. Looks so like we have a fuck yep. ton of tangos up here, so use them like crazy. Yeah, go and hit that guy. Every time you can. Every time he walks up and you're not having to CS a creep, hit him. By the way, when I said to level essence, I wasn't expecting to have a crystal main in your lane. I was expecting him oh. to just jungle. Might have been better to level Pounce, because you could have maybe killed him, but I don't think you could have. It's kind of one of those things. 
Just letting you know my reasoning there. Ah. So I'd invest in a PMS or an Orb of Venom? One of those two? I'll pull the next wave. I'm gonna miss this one, but I'll pull the next one. Well, you should definitely have it from the side shop instead of having the courier fly to. Ah, right. I tend to look at that. I'll just leave you in lane. Okay, I'm just gonna start taking notes. Okay, she pulled. Make sure you're back in lane before any of those creeps die. Talk about that pounce after the game. <laughs> Hit him a bunch. You can actually kill him here. Just keep hitting him. So what's your reasoning behind pushing the lane as hard as you are right now? Uh, trying to take the tower, then I want to like, get my shadow blade, I guess. Are you going to take the tower against a Night Stalker? Like, level, like as a level 4 Slark? Are you going to take a tower? Is he not just going to pull them off like he is now? Like, look at by you pushing the lane like you are, look at what's happening. Like, look at him. He's just free farming the lane. Um, while you're now jungling. Um, you should make sure you're back in lane before those creeps meet. So, like, right now you should be in lane. Mm. So, we're going to just talk about a lot of things. Definitely would have looked to stack the camp of 53 there. I was a little late saying it. I was taking notes, but something to keep in mind all the time. If he walks up for that range creep, you should go on him. And minus night. Just play it safe, Slart. Definitely not. You shouldn't just be missing CS. You just missed two CS because you're playing scared. I don't know what you're scared of. Uh, no, I, I like that. My, my screen froze. Oh, my screen okay. froze again. That's, that's yeah. a different reason. Is your screen still freezing? My stalker is roaming, so be careful, boys. Hello? Bad. Can you pull a 53 or is your screen frozen? It appears your screen yep, is frozen. I don't know how to coach that. Rip. That's a first. I can't pause, can I? No, I can't. No. Mm. I froze. Your team is not pausing for you. I guess yeah. Radiant, oh. their structures. But yeah, bring him down. Bring him down. Bring him down. Look to pull at 53 here. Your middle tower and make sure you kill that creep. Uh, always okay. prioritize the CS right, over the 9. Right. You're gonna have to tango a tree down, you're gonna have to tango. Ugh. It's gonna be too late now, I think. Oh god, the disaster. Oh. Yeah, it is. A little late there. Wrong hockey. Uh, wrong hockey. All 
I would recommend a PMS plus cooling blade for you after that creep. Mm. Go buy it right now. You just go to the side shop and buy it right now. Don't miss any creeps, but you're going to because you dark packed it. What's up with my screen freezing every time I try to see us? Go ahead and we'll buy your PMS. Oh. You really should look at your Never mind. You're going to go pull a 53? Uh, Please be ready to pull a 53. Yeah. Up the lane and then down after you pull it. My stalker's coming back top. What the heck? What actually just happened? What? I think, well, the, I think the crystal maiden blocked the camp, but I don't know why they de aggroed you. You can actually go on that guy. She nuked him a bit early. Uh, is there a reason why you have two points in pounce, by the way? Oh, uh, I that's probably I didn't think about it when I skilled it. Must have been. Okay. Yeah. Oh my god. I'm Rana. You should have pulled a 53 there. Cool. Alright, I didn't see that. Also get sniper. Oh no, I'm out. This, I'm out. TP. The Jukes. Nice jump. So basically at this point, uh, you have a ton of regen that you don't need. But go ahead and buy yeah. items. Yeah, just go ahead and look to buy items. Make sure you're not missing CS. Like, there's no reason not to be in lane. You should not be that scared. You should not be this scared. Alright. I don't know. There's just three heroes. There's three heroes, yeah. but unless you get hooked, you're not going to die. You can actually kill that guy. Yeah. Okay. No reason to be scared of that guy. Just pack the wave down and look to pull at 53. I would not pounce him. Yeah. Salve up, you have it. Value. Oh, that arrow though. I'm not sure I've got my full pack just now. Okay. Uh. So what's wrong with what you're doing right now? Uh, I'm low on regen. I'm trying to get... Uh, uh, just like, look at the lanes. Down. Look at the lanes. And then where should you be right now? Most likely back in my lane. Yeah, oh, and I'd go ahead and fly yourself your item as well as giving yourself... Or using a tango. You have seven of them. I'm trying to get level six here, so please stay out of the lane for a second. Think about packing this to push it so then you can pull a 53. Okay, so we're actually just going to talk about some. I got a lot of things. We're good. Sniper salty. Watch out for Pudchuk. Definitely just think you go back to base, you're low mana. You also didn't deliver yourself the Ring of Aquila. Their top tower is under 
Or, uh, yeah, I have two He's slots. All by Make sure that Akila gets to you. That Akila is leaving base again. Let's talk about your top Make sure we cut him off, boys. Don't let him escape. Uh, to sell the tangos. Your top tower is under attack. Definitely just had the courier fly to you, but that's fine. I'd go ahead and walk out to bottom. Push it out. Possibly look for a kill with your Beastmaster. Ping the uh, ping the axe. Check Axe's items. They can't hear you because you're talking only to me. He has a blink. Oh god, I thought I stepped him. Might reset itself after. Yeah. Uh, careful about getting blinked on. So you want to pack this wave and get out. You're scared of Axe. You don't want to be here. I'd go and TB top now. You pushed out bottom. You don't want to be here anymore. You're scared of Axe. Push out top as fast as possible. Yeah, we need to push this tower down. When you think about what heroes you're scared of and what heroes you're not, mm -hmm. Axe is your number one scare by far. Doesn't mean he's the only one, though. Go and check out what's going on bottom. Just trying to connect keep pushing, to keep pushing out top. You can't be there. You just want to know like if they can TP. Like in this kind of circumstance, you just want to know if since you can't be there, you're caring about their ability to stop you from pushing. So keep pushing out top. Keep pushing. You're by yourself. Make sure you're on agi treads when you're by yourself hitting towers. I should switch boots there. Put your keel on. You should be hitting that tower. You should not be scared. I know they're... Okay, now you should be scared. Yeah. Go ahead and push. Just go farm woods. Go farm woods. Yeah, Axe was just fighting bottom, so the odds of him are very slim of him being top. Make sure you're on Agitreads. You're going to go farm the lane top and then go back to that jungle camp when it respawns. Make sure you don't block it. Uh, you possibly could push top. You have a tide hunter with you now. Okay. Make sure you're hitting creeps on edge treads. Yep. Axe is top now, so be a little scared. Wait till you regen health. You might be able to go on him. Just wait till you regen health. Your tide has a blink, so you can definitely go on that guy. Sniper. You should go. He called already. He's coming down bottom and Mirana. All right, so you guys are good top. Ravage. Most they can have is a uh, nice stalker. What? what? Okay, regen up. You're gonna dark pack the next wave. Oh, that was a little, it's a little uh, panicky. Definitely uh, just packed oh, over. Oh, nice stalker. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead, TB bottom. TB bottom right now. TB bottom. You don't care about this. There's a lane to farm, and otherwise, if somebody else was there, then it'd be different. But. Time when you'd farm that is if you had time before those creeps got to the tower. Like, say the creeps were okay. like right here, then you would farm this camp and then TP bone Make sure you're on agi treads every time you're attacking, by the way. Should have cleared the wave first because axe could be bottom by the time you go for the wave now. Mm. No. Okay. So you should have cleared the wave and then gone to that jungle camp? Go to the small camp. Make sure you like walk to like right here. Just get full vision of anyone's around. We, we yeah, can okay, take right. mid here. You can definitely look to loop around on mid like he's talking about. But it is daytime now, so your strength is a little bit weaker now. I'll take that. Sniper's not really a scared thing for like he's not really a threat it's to like, you. So I definitely look to. 
Yeah, I definitely look to. I think they're just gonna try this. to. Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. They oh, just pot multi. Yeah, careful. You're just afraid of axe. Anything else you can pack before they use it on you. Uh, that's a little scary to walk up to that creep away with an axe missing. Like I, you could very well just die right now. But the axe no, wasn't there. I'd go ahead and walk back bottom. This way. I would not walk through the river. It's about the same time it takes. And you're in the low ground so they can blink on you and kill you. If you, uh, mm -hmm. there's just no re it doesn't save any time to go through the river, so there's no reason to. So, Don't push out the lane, one more packed. I'm gonna get vision up. You see them all top. Just make sure you don't get called with creeps. So you can definitely pat. You can bypass this creep wave. Like you can walk past. You're just playing scared for no reason. You should walk past it and cut off the creeps. Only way it's gonna go wrong is that since Axe is the only one missing, is that you getting called on top of a creep wave. So you're actually safer here than you are, like on top of your creep wave. By the way, you should oh. be just auto attacking the catapult and then double packing the wave. Your pact will kill the wave if you packed twice, but instead mm -hmm. you spent a lot of time attacking the wave. Go ahead and kill that camp. This one I kill that camp and TP home. TP home. Or I guess that works too. I would have TP'd mid tier two instead of the go right straight mid right now. Oh, oh get all right. Here. We should be good down here. Go straight mid, push that lane out, and then look to kill someone top. You should check out sniper's mm -hmm. items while you're walking. Sniper as well. He's pretty T, has a Shadow Blade, so he's not really a kill. You can definitely look for Marana mid, though. Yeah, Axe is bottom, so right after this Catapult and next wave, go ahead and uh, look for a kill on the Marana. So you can go through mid without being seen by the tower if you're Shadow Blade. So go ahead and Shadow Blade right now and go. Through mid, through mid, straight through mid. Oh. Yeah, I was saying direct route as possible. Axe can be there now, okay. so be very careful. You don't want to go if Axe is right there. They have to separate for you to go. Bad move, they're all there, man. Get yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, bad game. That is not a play. As you have to get out. Uh, just try to survive until you're. Uh... You need to leave, Slark. Yeah. Should be fine. I didn't even notice your skill build. Why do you not have pounce maxed? Uh, we'll talk about it later. Sure. We'll talk about that after. Go ahead and shadow blade again. You can, in the jungle, dude. Go some, you're gonna have yeah. to find somewhere else to go. You can actually harass that sniper at least. He's by himself. I don't know what he's doing. I guess he's DCing. You now have shadow blade? Yeah. Go ahead and go bottom. Just farm it out. You're missing a skill point. Okay, you used it. By the way, if you put three points in essence, you should definitely put the fourth. Uh, yeah, it's, all right. yeah, it's it's you either max like Slark is a hero where one of your two abilities is maxed before eleven. Like at level ten, you're four one four or four four one. It's like no other build is acceptable. I think. Go ahead and push out bottom again. No reason not to. X. I mean, I'm saying like he's by himself. So like right now, you would have been uh, safe. Okay, to they saw me. Yeah. You can definitely go on the axe. You have Beastmaster coming. You shouldn't be so scared. Hmm. I don't know what's happening. Go ahead and push out bottom. Yeah, you had you had vision around there, so you know, like, based on your I wards, that he has no backup. Let that go, but we'll see. So I would definitely go Silver Edge, like, right away in this game. Because of the X, as well as the fact that you don't need the mana regen from Echo Saber because you have a Crystal Maiden. Mm hmm. Go and push out the wave. You can try to look for a snipe pounce on that guy. Yeah, the guy can go. Okay, remove tower aggro. Do you know how to remove tower aggro? They're top chasing tide. Run straight mid. Yeah, run straight mid. Sorry, run straight mid. You're not needed for that tower. They're not defending. So now you just acknowledge you're not needed. Go mid. Okay. Push out the lane that needs to be pushed. By doing so, you're allowing your team to group up mid as well. 
Go ahead and clear that. Walk towards the other creeps that are already there. Like, don't spend time attacking. Okay, this time you're spending attacking could have just been a second pact. Do you see what I'm saying here? Uh -huh. Like, that could just be mm -hmm. a second pact as you're walking away. Yeah, really important to think about times where you don't need to be auto-attacking. Auto-attacking still is wasting time as well as, like, leaving yourself incredibly vulnerable to dying because you're just standing still auto-attacking. People are going to much easier gank you now. Your team's not grouping up, so I'd definitely just push out top. I would not look for kills. They are all five mid, but I guess I guess your team's there. You, you can go for it if you want, but I don't see a point. I would definitely... I guess, whatever. Just go for it. Yeah, I mean, the guy... Yeah, you don't have detection. Damn it, I don't have... That, at that point, I would have looked at Crystal Maiden's inventory and then looked to do that. I would definitely just push out top. I personally would have gone straight top in the first dust. place. Yeah, he has dust now. You can have dust as well, but uh, you do have the Silver Edge money, so the minute it gets back to base, buy the recipe and a set of dust, and then uh, send it to the secret shop. Make sure you buy your recipe right now, send it to the secret shop, and dust. This should be very quick, you should not be missing CS to do this. Mm. Recipe, dust, fly it to the secret shop. Recipe, dust, secret shop. Make sure you're just missing CS. I guess there's a fight going on. When did I pop the BKB? Eh, you tried. Buy yourself your item. Good job, boys. Fly yourself your item. You can go on that guy. You can go on that guy. You can go on that guy. Uh, did you buy dust? Or no? No. Okay. Uh, when the courier gets back to base, buy dust and a clarity. You're gonna go push out top right now. Actually, right. yeah, Storm's doing it, it looks like. You can look for a kill top. No, Storm's not doing it, push out top. If Storm pushed out top, look for a kill, since he's not. Push out top, buy yourself a clarity. Fly it to yourself. You're gonna drop the Orb of Venom at the secret shop. You're just gonna push out top, so just run straight to the lane. Every time you're shopping, you should not be stopping with your actual hero. Your hero should be walking to its destination. Hmm. Um, so to something, uh, yeah, and I'll be talking about it after the game. So go ahead and sell Do your sell orb of venom. Blade? No, sell your orb of venom. Go ahead and uh, have the courier deliver your clarity first. Back off. Clarity yourself, and then have the courier deliver your other item. Have the courier come back and deliver your other one. Okay. Go back in on that pudge right now. Here they come. Wait to see if they show up somewhere, like be patient. Wait till they give you knowledge of where they are. They look like they're bottom, so go on him. Just go on that guy, he's dead. Cover I need cover. Oh, the oh. guy get out of there, just get out. There's no way that guy's alone. Oh. Rip. Oh god. So this is when you look to go back in, because you're going to be like, oh, never mind, never mind, they're all there. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. Okay, so killing, killing coverage. Horrible stock plays, 101. Keep going mid, you're safe mid. You see Axe top, so you should be pushing mid, rather than doing whatever you're doing right now. Do I go for Scotty or BKB? Wait to go on him, I got smoke. Um, I would go Echo Saver. Go you can go on, on that guy, you can go on him, you have dust. Dust him, dust, 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 dust! Go straight top. Your team doesn't need you mid, but you can always look to go back. Run straight to the lane. You can actually go through the small camp, so I'd pounce into the small camp, kill the small camp, and then go to top. Pounce into the small camp and then kill it. Yep. And go to the lane. Exactly like that. Nice, keep going. You see them all mid, keep pushing very aggressively, you're not scared at all. 
Or do I drop for echo? Uh, quelling. Or a poor man's shield, honestly, it's your call. I would keep going. You're not scared. This is this is precious time. You're wasting time. This is not necessary. No reason to back off there. Like your your echo saber ain't gonna be there for like another two minutes, so or another thirty seconds. Keep pushing. Like you could have uh, pushed that tower, pushed the wave, and sold it at the secret shop instead of spending ten seconds walking back. Hmm. It's just efficiency things. Go ahead and uh, back off. Make it look like you're backing up. Make it look like you're backing off. So shadow blade. Wait for your echo saber. Go get your echo saber. While it's not in vision of him, loop around the tower like this. Take this tower, rotate to on top. You got the creeps pushing it. The enemy's middle tower has fallen. Hey, you can go on that sniper. Axe is dead. Axe is dead. You go on the sniper. You can just ult. No reason to not. Oh. Uh. Oh, Shadow Blade. Okay. Oh, did I not? You drown in blood. Keep pushing mid. You can push out that wave. Do we want to push? Actually, you can kill that pudge. That, that pudge. Oh, oh, never mind. Up, just back off. Axe is alive. Axe is alive. Just run. Oh, run with go. impunity, like pounce. Yep. Go bottom. Down. Straight bottom. Just loop straight to bottom. You see them all mid. Next wave. And then you're gonna loop back towards mid looking for a kill on somebody that's alone, but keep in mind the only thing that can go wrong if you go on somebody, I'm gonna ask you what that is. What is what can go wrong? X call or dust. Yeah, X called. X being X calling, so you have to concern yourself with only X. You can actually push one more wave. Mm. So as long as you go on a target that doesn't have X to save sure them, you're fine. But if you go on a target that has X to save them, you're not fine. So look for kills, be but be lane. patient. So you have to know where Axe is. Shadow Blade now. It's a you know that's Cover for me. Silver Edge is low cooldown. You see Night Stalker top. See Mirana bottom. If Axe shows anywhere other than bottom, you should go on bottom. So I would. This is what I would have done. I would have patiently waited bottom, and the minute Axe shows somewhere else, I would have gone on bottom. And if he doesn't show somewhere mm -hmm. else, I would have farmed this creep wave. Both options are fine. All right. So that's why I would have been bottom. I need somebody to get top. Yeah, you can definitely loop behind mid right now. You actually, that's definitely a fight. Your tide hunter is going to be a little late, so you just got to make sure you don't die before Ravage goes off. Axe, 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 axe. He, he's up. He's right there. Where are you going? Uh, sorry, I meant go on axe. Oh. Yeah, axe is really yeah, low. I, I know what you meant. I saw him walk here. You, Help you, t help you, Tide Hunter. Help you, Tide. Oh, they're Moran ulted. I would ult. Packed and run. You packed it off the dust, so just survive until you're. Nope. Okay. So you definitely, if you'd killed the axe before, I think you'd be fine there. It's all about. Picking the fights correctly. Um, mm -hmm. So my question for you is like, if you go on Axe and ult him, like if you ult yourself, how? Are, what are they gonna do about it? The rest of his team. Nothing. Okay. I'm immune to all physical damage. Yeah, you're immune to all damage if you just ult when you kill the Axe. It's if you go on someone else and you ult, then he can call you and stop you from killing them. But if you go on Axe himself, he just dies. So in that kind of scenario, when you see a low HP Axe behind his team. If there's a hero on the enemy team that saves his allies, then if you go on them and use ulti on Slark to kill them, it's it's a huge deal. It's like say they have a lion and he's the only stun and you go on someone else, then like lion can wait till you packed and then impale you while you're ulting. Like he can stop you. But like in this kind of game it's axe. So if you ever see axe initiatable onto then you go on him. Period. Like you just go like and if he's low, like you can burst him. Like if he's full health it's different, but he was like 500 health there. So make sure you buy dust. Really need dust on you. I'd almost buy two sets of dust. 
I would buy two sets of dust on your hero. Replace your poor man's shield with TP. Walk to bottom. Not TP, walk. So that whole process should have taken about a second and a half. It took you about six or seven. Mm. Um, something I harp on with almost every person I coach, but I'm going to keep being a stickler for it. I'm looking to jump on you, man. Back Is that out. like a certain way we should Beastmaster. be cooking or... I'll talk about it after the game. We can have a discussion. You should definitely be looking at the fight mid while this is going on. If Even if you're not showing up, you should definitely know what's going on. You can definitely go. I think you can clean that fight up, honestly. I definitely think you can kill somebody. Like, Axe is probably killable. Maybe Night Stalker. Definitely run into the fight. Yeah, you don't, like, that, that Invis rune is so negligible. Check out for detection on them. They use dust. Wait for them to separate. Wait for them to separate. Patience. Spark. It's all about patience. Spark, bad idea. It's all about patience to ignore that guy. I have him muted. You might have him muted. Just wait for them to separate. If they don't separate, you don't go. Okay, well, okay. Night Stalker, Night Stalker. You can kill that guy. You can kill that guy. You can kill Night Stalker. Oh. Okay, Marana? Or Night Stalker? Okay. Shadowblade, immediately, you need to regen. You can go on Axe if he goes in. I'd back off. I'd back off, sniper's respawning. That's fine, that's a lot of essence shift stacks. Just run, you don't want to be there anymore. Go straight bottom. I'd actually TP bottom. Just gotta recognize when you don't want to be somewhere anymore, and just get out. Mm -hmm. With the mana regen you have, when you TP in like that, always just pounce, like, get there sooner, you know? If you didn't have much regen, it's obviously different, but you have, like, a lot of uh, mana regen. Uh, make sure you sell your PMS. Um, in this kind of game, I would personally go BKB instead of Scotty. I personally would. I'd push out another lane bottom. And the reason why I say that is at this stage in the game, if you go on any target of theirs and BKB, they literally have no damage to kill you. Like you can, your BKB service is basically a 10 second ultimate. Um, in this kind of game. In some games that's not the case, but in this game, like they just don't possess the physical damage to kill you. Um, you can definitely look to go on somebody with your 13 essence shift stacks. So be careful of Axe initiating on you. They're all missing with a... Uh, Marana ulti. I would run towards mid, just looking for something in this area, but obviously be patient. Like I said, you want the... Yep, there's Axe. Okay, so you see Axe, so if there's someone by themselves, you can look to go. I would definitely fly yourself your BKB. I don't think you need the TP scroll if you have a BKB. So definitely just fly yourself then. Sucks you weren't able to use your essence shift, but it's not like you could have done anything about it. This guy. Yeah, I think it's better on him anyway. Go ahead and push that out. Oh, he's dead. You can definitely look to just go on Axe. Go! You're not scared. Oh. I thought you already had your BKB. My bad. I didn't want to let the... BKB? Packed right away. You dusted, pounce. Oh god. You can look to re-engage, you still have ult. Obviously it's Night Soccer ult, which is annoying. Out ult. Oh god. This is interesting. To say the least. Try to create space if you can. Damn. Is that a Night Stalker with a gym or what? No, he didn't have gym. Mm. No, um, I, my soul kill. Kill. I guess your Beastmaster is just taking a tier 3. I don't exactly know what's happening over there. Yeah, your Beastmaster just didn't want to show up at the fight. Arrow, dead. Yeah, he's dead. fine. He's, he's going to kill him. He's going to man up and kill the guy. Capper. He definitely could have manned up and just killed that guy, I think. 
Like, he would have taken him with him, but he just chose not to. Um, so that's the kind of time where it's really important to, like, preemptively BKB when you go on, uh, was it Pudge? Yeah. Because, like, there's just no way that guy's yeah, by I've, himself. I've been mediocre connection at best. And even time. if he happens to be by himself, like, worst case scenario, you waste a BKB. But if he's not by himself and you don't BKB, you could easily get, like, you called into arrow and just die. And, like, that's not a risk you're willing to take. That's pretty much what I'm telling you. Mm. Like, that's not a risk you're willing to take if you're going on that pudge. Like, if I BKB and I go on this pudge, I'm not going to die. Period. And obviously you saw you didn't die. Um, and it's generally a slark. Like, obviously the, the, the BKB duration is nice. But mainly in a game like this, you're just making sure you don't get Night Stalker silenced and then die. So hey, no the, the, the duration of BKB is not all that important. I'd go ahead and run bottom. Check out what's going on top. Manta. And Axe. Oh, yes, tier 4. So, after you push out this creep wave, I'd actually just sell my Ring of Aquila for a TP. Mm. After this creep wave. Holy shit. So, go ahead and sell that Aquila for a TP. Keep pushing bottom. Check the items of heroes like Night Stalker. I don't know if he has an axe or anything. I haven't seen you check. He doesn't have axe. Okay. No, near. Yeah, he's just not going axe for whatever reason. Keep pushing out bot. They're all mid. Be very aggressive. Pushing. Um, if your team is going to fight mid, you should be there ready. But you definitely want to... This is a better spot to push their base rather than trying to contest them right now. This is what you do. You force someone back, and if you only force one or two heroes back, you immediately TP mid and kill them. Like, or look for kills. Spend the time attacking tower, not creeps. Same idea as a catapult. You just double pack the wave instead of the creeps. Watch out for Axe. You can kill that guy, I think. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a fucking dead Marana. Nice job, guys. No, I'm on. Worth. Yeah, definitely nice should just have killed that Marana, but it's alright. Got the tower. You look to kill that Night Stalker. Ugh. He sees you now, probably. Yeah. Oh, uh, I would not have. Okay. You yeah, definitely BKB. BKB Silverage. Okay. They dusted that they missed, I think. Sometimes the buff bar is too big. Hey, Definitely look to go straight on that sniper. Off. You have dust. Just go straight towards him. They don't see you. Just dust him right away before anything. Just dust. I have a war, but I don't have dust. Oh, okay. Never mind. They just, he's just dead. So you have ult in six seconds, so you're still willing to fight, even without BKB. You just have to be careful of getting silenced. You can look to push still. You have Tide Ravage. You should still stay bottom. You should just be careful. Mm. Like you should serve as like a scout, so you should go Silver Edge and run around you. Yeah. Your team just decided not to push. Oh, they're all Moran Be very careful. Uh, yeah, you'll go on that guy. He's by himself. Dustin? Actually, never mind. He's. Oh, nice bait. He's a bait. Morana should be your focus for sure. Nice pounce. You just go on Sniper, you have Dustin 12, and you also have a Night Stalker right behind you. Your sniper, he already went in this. Use your Shadow Blade. Shadow Blade, Shadow Blade, Shadow Blade, Shadow Blade. Okay. Go ahead and go mid. They had a perfect opportunity to just ult mid, 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 on our fucking mid. on our storm spirit, and instead they do it on a level twelve crystal mid. <laughs> Your teammate's pretty funny. I think you muted him at the start. Um. Yep. I don't blame you, but he's kind of funny. Okay. So there's obviously a lot uh, to talk about this game. Yeah, it's fine. There's a lot to talk about. It is fine. That's what we're gonna take away from this session. Um, a lot of things to talk about. 
This is like the shittiest rat though that I think I've ever done. Correct. Deep. So many. That's when you're supposed to fucking buy a refresher orb while you're right there. Like, clearly you have no experience diving found a slurk. Jesus. No, I don't. Yeah. You're supposed to, while you're getting axe called there, you're supposed to buy a refresher and put it in your inventory, use it, and then ult again and kill them all. I mean, I know that's like pretty much like 1k level knowledge, but great, uh, great you know, I'm being sarcastic by the way. Um, but that is something to do, you know, by the way. is If you're ever diving found in a slark, definitely a refresher. They're fucking standing around like they want you to fucking... Okay. No, I because the only time I ever jump in a fountain is PA. Yeah, nice, nice. Refresher orb isn't really the item on her. Okay, but uh, yeah. So we'll start talking about this game. Like you can play it out, but I'd rather, I'd almost rather actually just play it out. Just play it. Um, no reason to start talking already. This game will end very soon. I'm gonna chill here, drinking my Red Bull and eating a salad. <laughs> uh, definitely go for the refresher orb, man. This is when you practice shit like refresher orb. It's actually a legit item on Slark. So go ahead and buy one right now. This is when you practice. This is when you okay. practice. I'm not even joking. Like it is a legit item on Slark, and so you should practice using it right now. So in the next fight, try to make sure you pounce, packed, BKB, Silver Edge, and ult, and then refresher. All right, changing BKB to a better heart. You'll fuck up for sure, by the way. But this is how you learn. So it's like pounce. BKB. Use everything and then refresh it, basically. <laughs> Alright. So you're gonna run in and fight them regardless. Like, just find someone to fight, it doesn't matter. You're actually unkillable if you don't fuck up, but we'll see how it goes. This is the most retarded Slark game I've ever had. It's a legit Slark build, by the way. I'm not trolling you. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I've seen you. I know it's been a weird game. Definitely just go fight them, man. Get them! Get them! Look at the mini-map, I mean, look at the actual fight. Look at them. Look at their heroes. Yeah, go in them. Get that axe. Get that axe. He's your bitch. BKB. Nice. Oh. Dust. Oh, God. You did it before you ulted. <laughs> and that's why you practice at games that are mega creeped. Yeah. And I'm talking to you, and I'm just going to give a quick, like, say to chat as well. When you guys have Mega Creeps and there's an item that you know is viable on a hero and it's hard to use, like Refresher on Slark, you actually should just buy it and practice using it. Um, Refresher Slark is not easy to use. It took me probably 25 to 30 purchases of Slark Refresher Orb until I felt even semi-comfortable using it. There's a lot of uh, buttons to push as Slark. Uh, before, like In this kind of game, how it would go for me... Is that I would packed BKB, and then the minute my BKB is about to wear out, I would ult, and then I would refresh her, and then the minute my ult's off, I would BKB again, and then when my BKB's out, I would ult. And you pretty much have like 18 seconds of doing whatever the fuck you want. So it's just something to practice, obviously, but it's obviously a lot of buttons. So, okay. Um, so we're just gonna start talking, man. So, Lane Equilibrium. Uh, what, remember, what did I tell you at the start of the game was the approach with the Night Stalker? If he's in your lane. Uh, uh, it was a Level 1 approach. Skill Essence Shift. Skill Essence Shift and do what? Hit him as many times. Okay, and if the lane's pushing into his tower, are you able to do that? No. Exactly. So... I was going to say, isn't even possible if lane is pushed to his tower. First wave, you auto-attacked and push lane, making it virtually impossible to do what you needed to do. Not items, not only items and skill builds are important for accomplishing what you know needs to be accomplished. Like when I talked about with that last guy, you know, if you're going to go on an axe, you need a salve because, you know, you're going to lose all your health. It's not just items and skill build. It's about knowing the situation that needs to be occurring in order for that to happen. Um, so if you know that he can't be under tower for you to harass him a bunch, you should not push the lane into his tower. Um, unless you're going to pull at 53, but you're 
Um, that's not something you do against axes, a slark, and low levels. Or against a night stalker, sorry. Um, it's slark at low levels. Uh, so it's definitely a big thing that you need to recognize the situation and lane that you need to occur in order to do what I talked about. Um, so not only is it important to know what you need to do, but it's important to know what the lane needs to look like for it to happen. Um, basically what happens is if you do that lane properly, perfectly, you'll keep lane equilibrium while harassing him, and then every time he walks up, you'll hit him, and then he'll learn to stop walking up, and then you're free farming the lane. Um, is pretty much the sequence of events. Uh, and then once you get ahead in lane, that's when you can start like push-pulling the wave. Like once you're like level 5, you'll just start push-pulling and denying him even more. Um, it gets to here like Night Stalker, like every hero has his power spike. You just need to be ahead by level by minute 4. Uh, that's all that needs to happen. You need to be ahead by minute 4. If you're not ahead, a good player will punish you. Uh, is pretty much what it boils down to on a hero like that. That makes sense, right? Like make sure you're ahead at minute 4. You yeah. know, you, that makes sense, right? So it's one of those yeah. things where, you know, you let him get pretty much free XP in the offlane. And a lot of the reason why when I'm in my 2K Smurf games that I just go offlane is because I'm given free XP, whether it be the support's fault or the carry's fault. But you need to think about, like, you know, as Slark in a lane like that, you know, on my video I talk about the fact that you need to establish lane dominance first before you do the whole push-pull at 53 thing. You can't just, like, it doesn't just work to push-pull the lane on every hero in every situation. You have to get ahead uh, first. So I told you what it took to get ahead, and then you obviously didn't leave the lane the way it needed to be. So next time around, think about, this is what I need to do to be ahead, and I need the lane to look like this to be ahead. Um, and what's going to happen is, it's hard enough to accomplish that once you know what needs to happen. It's hard enough to do that. I'm telling you, like, mechanically speaking, it's hard enough to make sure you're harassing while not pushing the lane. But if you're making sure, you're, if you're trying your best to not push the lane, what's going to happen is things are going to go wrong, and then you're going to realize, shit, next time around I'm going to do this so the lane doesn't push. Like, I'm going to do this differently. But if you're not trying to not push the lane, you're never going to learn to not push the lane, how to not push the lane because you're not even thinking about it. Like, does that make sense? Like, you, you weren't even thinking about pushing yeah, the lane. That, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So the whole goal for me is to get you in a spot where you're, like, thinking, okay, so I need the lane to not be pushed. So, but I need to harass him. So now I need to get that accomplished. What, and so like now I'm going to need to start looking at my mistakes in that way. Meaning like, what is, what am I doing wrong? That's not harassing him enough. What am I doing wrong? That's pushing the lane, like whatever it is. Um, that's what, that's the goal. And it's like, that's what coaching, that's, that's what that's meant to be. So anything, do you have a question, anything about the landing stage there? That's like the major thing about the uh, landing stage. Yeah. When you say exert dominance, I kind of get the idea, but, um, uh, that's because I was against, let's say, a solo. I think I was a solo night stalker, if I remember. Yeah, it was. And so I'm supposed to keep on hitting him. Yeah. But also try not to missing CS at the same time. Yeah. Okay, so like, here's my example for you, or here's like what I'm gonna say to you, is, it's actually sometimes worth missing CS. Okay. Um, and what I mean by that is like, it it's all trade off. Like, what's more important, hitting the night stalker four times or one CS? And my answer would be hitting the mm. Night Stalker four times. I would actually rather hit him four times. What's more important, hitting him once or a CS? Probably the CS, right? Like, I would probably go for a CS over hitting him once. Um, the big thing about that kind of lane, though, when I say exerting dominance, is if every time that Night Stalker goes up for a last hit to kill one of your creeps, instead of rather denying him, you hit him twice, he's going to stop walking up for creeps eventually, or he's just going to lose all of his health and you're going to kill him. Like, that's, like, those are the two options. He can't afford every time he hits a creep... Like, if he say he gets 20 CS in the first three minutes, but every time he's hit a creep, you've hit him twice, it doesn't add up. Like, he's not going to get that much CS because you've just hit him twice. So, like, instead of going for denies, you just hit him twice. That's exerting dominance. Like, every time he walks up, you hit him twice. And if he does it again, you hit him twice. Like, every single time. And it's like, that's why I talked about Essence Shift level one. Um, I didn't expect to have a Crystal Man in your lane. Um, maybe Pounce might have been better in that specific game, but even then, Stark with no Essence Shift does, like, no damage. Um... So I, I probably think the essence shift is still correct. Um, but that's what I'm talking about. Every lane is different with every hero, but you have to think about like what your advantage on them. Like when I told the PA coaching session, it's like Tempersile level one has low armor and you're all physical damage, but at level three, he has a lot of armor. So you need to punish him before level three and you got to kill him like a level two or whatever. Um, but it's like all about recognizing like, you know, what your advantages are in lane. And it's like a level one Night Stalker at daytime is incredibly weak. And Slark with Essence Shift trades really well. So it's like, every time he walks up, hit him. Um, that's like, that's really like what I mean by exerting dominance. And every lane's different with every hero matchup. But you have to 
try to theorycraft your way of exerting dominance. If you're a Slark against an Axe, there's no such thing as exerting dominance. Like, you, if you hit him, he's going to spin you, and you lost the trade, period. Um, so on that kind of lane, you want to play passively until you see an opportunity to potentially kill him with, like, a support rotation, and then you go. Um, and you seize opportunities like that. But otherwise, you, like, use creep aggro, and you just get CS. Those are the kind of lanes where you, like, farm back and just, like, make sure you're getting CS as much as possible. Because, like, a Slark against an Axe matchup, you're not hitting him and having it be favored for you. That's just not happening. Um, so in that kind of lane, you wouldn't, quote-unquote, exert dominance because it's not possible. And so in a lot of lanes, if you think about it to yourself, I don't know a way to exert dominance. Half the time, there probably is no way to exert dominance, and half the time, that's probably why you need a coach. You know, like, that's probably why, like, a coach would help you to t explain to you, you know, how you would go about doing that. Um, so, like, in this game, I told you, for Night Stalker, that's how you go about doing it. Um, and that's just something, like, the reason why I know this is over the course of 4,000 games or whatever I've played, probably more, probably way more, actually, I don't know what I'm talking about, 7,000 games or whatever, I've thought about these things or watched RTZ or, you know, EE or, like, other people who stream, and I've watched them play the matchup and saw how they approached it and then decided to mirror them or, like, think about, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I have to do this, like, level one. I really have to punish that guy uh, or stuff like that. Um, it's all about thinking about these things, and over time, you'll eventually get them. Like, like eventually, you'll refine, you know, the ability to pull, to keep the lane static while harassing the guy. Um, then you'll realize in some matchups where you can't do both, like it's actually not possible, so maybe you have to take a different approach. Like, it's all about, um, you know, slowly figuring it out every single game. Um, but for you, what I'm telling you now is these are things you have to start focusing on. Um, in the landing stage especially, just because it's the most straightforward part of the game, meaning like at 20 minutes in, if you're talking about a Slark versus Anti-Mage matchup, a lot can happen in the first 20 minutes that changes the dynamic of that matchup at 20 minutes in. But in the laning stage, every time you go into the laning stage, it's the same against the same hero. Like, if you're, axe against a, if you're a Slark against an Axe and you go into the laning stage, it's the same lane every time, unless there's, like, a, you know, unless there's, like, a support or something. But even then, you can get used to, like, you know, if you have an idea of the matchup against of Axe versus Slark, then you'll, like, you can have a decent idea of, like, what an extra support for you would do or an extra support for him would do if you have an idea of what the matchup of 1v1 is. So that's why I try to focus on the, on the laning stage a lot. Um, if that if that makes sense to you, um, yeah. So really quick, the really basic things um, you simply just need to do them faster. Uh, shopping is the main one. Um, a lot of it's like I always say when I'm like telling you to shop, like all those times. If you look back at the like replay of this session of when I told you to shop, like when I said poor man shield and boots and lane. You just killed the axe. There wasn't a wave to farm. Or, sorry, you just killed the Night Stalker. There wasn't a wave to farm in, like, that 10-second period, and I told you to buy your item, but what happened was you walked up to the lane, hit the creep twice, and then backed off to buy your item, and then missed two creeps in the process. And it's, like, all these times where you don't have something to do, like, when your hero's walking somewhere, and I told you, buy items. It's, like, well, you would your hero would just stop. And it's, like, instead, you should just right-click on the minimap where you want your hero to go, and then spend the time buying items. Um, but you should have a hockey for, like, you, I saw you manually clicking the courier button in the bottom right. That should just, I mean, I'd say 90% of the people I coach do that. It's like, there's a hockey in the options for that. Like, why not push, you know, Z instead of having to manually click down I, I there? Have a hot, I have a hotkey for the courier. I'm just not used to using it. And that's what I'm saying is now, like, for you as a 2K player or a 3K player, all these players below 4, I basically say below 4K. And, uh, like, some of these things obviously apply to higher, but, like, you know, individually based. But there's little things like that where just one day, man, like, you make sure every single time you're using that courier, you push that hockey. Like, I'm telling you tomorrow, play six games of Dota and every, or, you know, whatever, however many you have time for. And every single time, you like, if you push that manually, I'm telling you to, like, send the courier back to base and push the button. Like, I'm telling you to, like, that's how you fix these things. You don't fix those things by, like, not, like, or by like, having the hockey and not thinking about it. Those kind of things... These mechanical things, these hockey-based things, are just things where you just need to accept. Like, like right when I added a fort hockey, I literally was just like, I'm not going to fort unless I use the hockey. And then eventually I missed, like, five forts where I should have forted. And I, like, you know, I forted a tier one after it died or something because I used the hockey instead of manually clicking it. But that's the only way I'm going to learn. I'm not going to learn if every time, like, uh, by default I go click it. You know, it's not going to work. Um, you have to punish yourself. You have to make yourself learn by doing that. Um, and that's like those ideas. So it's like you should have an open shop hockey. You should have like every game, every game. Watch me. Every single game, 
I have at least one, usually three or four items queued up in my quick buy, like right when the game starts, like before I even get to lane. That's something you can do every single game. And the reason why that I view that to be so important is because that means you have a general plan for how that lane's going to go. Like, I think I need a poor man shield. I think I need a quelling blade. I think I need a stick. I think I need boots. I think I need an orb of venom. And if you have those things queued up in your quick buy, or that means before the lane started, you're thinking about what items you need. And that's like, that's like a nice way to do that. Um, so it's like a, just a big, these little shopping things should be like, um, it, uh, it really just takes practice. And like, I'm telling you, if you focus on them one at a time, um, tread switching, shopping, like just general mechanics. Like you walk over to that secret shop and I told you to buy a poor man's of boots. Those items should be like, 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 you know, instant, like they should just be purchased, um, like within a second. And if you're not doing that, then next time around, like you need to like do whatever it takes, put them in your quick buy, um, like have custom builds. Like I have, um, all those little things are just like little five, 10 second, like chops off of your game. They are just gone. Like, you can't get them back. You just wasted five seconds on something that is honestly skillless, meaning, like, it's it's not, like, it's just practice. It's muscle memory. It's nothing more than just practice. Like, it's not like I'm an infinitely better player than you because I can shop faster. It's just because I focused on it for a lot of time. Um, and all of those little things are really, like, when I say mechanics for sub-4K players, it's just those, like, those kind of things, tread switching, all these little things that can just be hammered out one one at a time. Um, so do you have any questions about like hockey's for that or like any other things you have thought about or something like that? Yeah, um, I, just, just a quick go back to that match just now. Um, let's say the nice was walking out to hit a creep. Would it have been better if I pounce and hit him or just hit him? At what part? Uh, let's say a night soccer was walking out to hit a creep and then would it have been better if I pounce and hit him? Okay. Uh... I hate to say this, but do you have any other questions? Because I have an exact note that addresses that problem that you just talked about. So, do you have any other All questions right, before um, I move on? I actually have an exact note to address that question. Uh, just give me a second. Uh, no. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go on. I promise one of my notes is going to directly get to that. So, I'm just going in order, but I promise I will address that question. Okay. So, uh, you know, the next thing is, like, it's big camp pull. You know, this is another mechanic that I'm talking about, is you should literally one day, or even uh, something like that, honestly, as important as it is, I would say, like, a week straight, literally just every lane you're in, think about your potential to push the lane, pull the lane, think about every single time you finish a creep wave, okay? That's, like, when the pull's going to happen. You finish creep waves at, like, 320 and 350. Like, that's when you're going to finish the creep waves. So every time you finish a creep wave, there's a one out of two chance that it's the right time to pull at 53, meaning, like, it's, you know, it's it's on the minute mark instead of the 30-second mark. So what I mean by that is if you're focusing for an entire week at the end of every creep wave, judging whether or not you should pull at 53, you'll stop forgetting to pull at 53. Um, if it's the right thing to do, you'll start gauging it. And it's like, it's one of those things where it's, it's hard and like people ask me, when is it correct to pull? When is it like, and all this stuff. It's so like, these kind of things are so detailed that I can't teach you exactly. I can like, if, once you start doing it on your own, meaning like you start pulling every time, I can start talking to you about these things, but I can't just like describe them to you. There's so many unique scenarios that can happen. It's just like with the... Um, with the, you know, learning to harass Night Stalker while keeping the lane equilibrium. I can only tell you that's what you need to do, and then it's on you to start doing it, and then me to, like, watch you trying to figure it out, and if you run into problems, I can help you from there. But that's one of those kind of things where, like, now it's on you. Every time you, it's possible to pull, and you think it might be right that you go for it, and then you learn from there on your own, and, like, come back with more questions or something after you've started doing it. But you're, you know, it, the first question you, their first problem you have to address is, like, Every, every minute mark being ready to pull a 53, you know, having that be in the forefront of your mind, you know, you're just not, you're not thinking about clearly because there were like three or four times where you're just like, it's like 350 or 348, it's like 48 second mark of the minute and you have the time and you're just not, like that's really all there is to it. Um, so for you, like really quick, like, you know, spend a week where every lane, you're just like, can I push, pull the lane? And every minute, like after every lane, after every creep wave goes away, will I pull it? Um, and that's just a big thing for you to focus on. Um, and you'll start mastering for yourself when and when not to pull. Um, okay. Any question about that? And then the next note's my, your pounds thing. Any, any question on that? The pulling thing? No. Okay. Um, I understand that perfectly. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. So 
um, this, this whole note I have is addressing your pounces. So like overall, what you just talked about and pounces in general. So, you know, this is obviously unique to Slark. Um, some of these points are not unique to Slark and I'll talk about this. So my comment on your, on your pounces is you're not patient at all with your pounces. Uh, you are, you used it pretty much at max range as early as possible, almost every single time. So what I mean by that is like, for instance, in that lane, when you went for the Night Stalker pounce, um, that one time you're like, oh, I missed like really early on. Do you remember that? Like it was like over the trees and you missed, yeah. and you're like, oh, I missed. Like that was a perfect example of what I'm talking about. You went for such a max range pounce when it's a Night Stalker during the day who's slow. So, and he's going to have to take a predictable path to get away from you. And Crystal Maiden hadn't used her slow yet. So either way, you're going to get a better pounce opportunity than that one is the best way I can word it. Um, and that's what I mean by not patient at all. So that has a lot to do with thinking about the situation through, but also like thinking about what your pounce is for. Um, so I'm going to ask you, what are the positives and negatives of going for a long range pounce like when is the only time in my opinion and now we're going to get you on the same page when you should go for a long range high risk pounce meaning like whether or not it's going to land when do you think is the right time to go for that there's really only like one situation that that's the correct play can you think of it going for a long range pounce uh they hold something like a gem or to secure a kill. I mean, okay, literally, like you're on the right track. But the reason is, is there's not going to be a better opportunity to pounce the guy. Like, that's literally the only reason. Like, and what I mean by that is, like, if you don't land that pounce right now, you're never getting closer to them. For instance, like, they're a faster hero. Um, they're a hero with a blink dagger. So if you don't go for it right now, they'll just blink away. Um, you know, stuff like that. But, like, if you're against a hero... Like, if, okay, so what is your pounce effective, like, with all the nerfs to the damage in it, what does your pounce give you? Like, what does it do for you? If you latch the close, guy. Close, uh, closes distance. And then what happens, what, what do you gain from latching the guy? Uh, he can't get away. Uh, Mirana's pounce doesn't really work. Getting now, away. just think about it, it's really straightforward. What does it allow you to do if the guy's pounced? What does it allow your hero to do? It's a really simple thing. Like, don't overthink it. Uh, hit him. Hit him. There you go. Exactly. So when you're asking, when Night Stalker walks up to hit creeps, should I just pounce him? What would my answer be to you? Yes. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, like, if he's right next to you, in range to hit him, why would you pounce him? The pounce lets you oh, hit right. him. In range to hit him. The pounce lets you hit him. So why would you pounce a guy that's already being hittable? If you watch me play Slark, the times I get kills is when the guy goes for a CS and I've hit him like four or five times already, and then he realizes, oh shit, the Slark's hit me four or five times, I'm going to back off, and then what do I do? After he starts trying to back off because he's scared. You pounce if you can't get Then the I pounce him. Then I pounce. Yeah, I don't pounce him right away. Like, if I pounce him right away, then like... You know, Slark's a snowballing hero when it comes to right-clicking people. Like, you have like the more you hit them prior to the pounce, the more damage you're gonna do during the pounce. Like that makes sense just because of essence shift, right? So it's the same idea in the yeah. laning stage. It's the same idea in team fights. It's the same idea like at all stages of the game. It's like if you're on top of somebody and you have an echo saber, and it's like a sniper. Unless he has like a four staff, if they have like a four staff or a Marana leap or something, obviously you instantly pounce them. Like if. You know, you have to stop them from using those abilities. But like, if they're a hero that you can stick on for three hits and then pounce them, why, why, why not wait? You know, why, why instantly pounce them? Why not just hit them three times and then pounce them? Um, it's like one of those things where you have to think about how many times can I hit this guy before I pounce? Um, and it's like one of those things where you have to think about that's something that applies to other heroes. Um, for Slark especially, is if you use your pounce and you go in and it's a bad situation, what has pounce effectively done for you? Like, what are you doing when you pounce somebody? Like, you're committing. Uh, I guess it's the best way I can word it. Yeah. You're committing to going. So if you go on somebody that, like, say you, have, you can hit them three times before pouncing them, right? That doesn't just mean that you're hitting them three times and then getting more hits during the pounce. That also means that you have three hits worth of time to gauge whether or not it's correct to pounce them. Because, like, what if you hit somebody three times and then suddenly, in that duration that you've hit them, you suddenly see Axe and Pudge on the minimap close enough to almost blink you? 
wouldn't you rather turn around and pounce away? Yeah. And leave. Like, if you go in and pounce and Axe calls you, you're committed. You're in. Like, you're, like, and if it's a bad idea, you're fucked. So, like, that time that you pounced the Night Stalker and, like, the Axe was there as well, that's one of those times where, like, you didn't have to go for that long-range pounce. And if Axe is there, you're screwed. And it's, like, one of those things where you're like, oh, the Axe showed up right after I pounced him. It's like, well, instead of just going in for the pounce right away, if you just wait, give yourself some more information. Like, all those times I told you to be patient, wait for information. Instead, you just pounce. You just went. And it's like, it's one of those things where you got away with it because they didn't have detection. But like, better players, you would have just died there. And like, that, what I mean by that is just like, think about all the times that you pounced that you could have waited. And then how many of those times in the time that you could have waited, something changed. Like in that case, you went immediately to go for the Night Stalker and then suddenly there's, a night, there's an axe right next to him. It's like, if you had just waited like a second or two to pounce, you would have noticed that axe there. And it's like one of those things where... That's why you, I'm talking about you don't have any patience with your pounces. And the thing that applies to other heroes as well, it's like if you're – like the guy I just coached with PA, if I tell him he has to wait to see an axe blink in, it's like then he shouldn't pounce. Like it's one of those things where, you know, if you blink in with PA and it's wrong, you're fucked. Like <laughs> you're dead. Um, but if you, you know, if you think about it carefully and only blink when you think it's really safe to do so, then it's better. And obviously I'm, it's a little bit different. But it's the same concept of, like, if you're pouncing and you commit when you don't have to, it's like, if I can just keep daggering this guy from a distance with PA, and I know I'll be able to blink on him in 10 seconds from now as long as I am keep daggering him, then why rush the blink unless I feel absolutely 100% positive I can get away with it? Same idea with Slark. Like, why pounce the guy unless I'm 100% sure I can get away with it? It's like, it's one of those things where it's, it's all about that patience. So it's the same idea in the lane and team fights. It's like, if you go on a pudge... And hit him with Silver Edge and Echo Saber. It's like hit him three more times and then pounce. Um, you know, it's the same idea. And so it's like one of those things where, you know, with your Dark Pact, especially too, it's like if you know with a Pudge, the only thing he's going to do is dismember you. So it's like wait till he turns around and then start your Pact. Because otherwise, if you lead off immediately with a Pact, then, you know, you're giving yourself less time to effectively hit him because the minute your Pact runs out, he can dismember you. And you should know if you go on a Pudge. And your pact runs out, what should you do if you're going to keep hitting him? If you want to keep hitting the pudge, what should you do if your pact runs out? Ulti. Yeah, ult. Right away. That's your only option. You can't BKB. You can't, um, you can't do anything. You can't do anything else. You have to ult. It's so it's like, ulti. yeah, exactly. Because he can, he can ult you right after you end your pact. There's one or two fights where that happened, where you went on the pudge, your pact ended, and you didn't immediately ult. So it's like one of those things where it's like, think about, like, like I said, I ask you these questions. I'm playing these situations out for you. And you're answering them correctly now, like once we've talked about them through. So now it's on you going into these games every time. It's like, if I go on Pudge, I want to wait as long as I can to Pact. And then the minute my Pact runs out, I have to do this. And that should happen with every single hero. Um, so, like, on top of that, you know, all these things I'm talking about with Slark and committing to fights. That one time you went on S Sniper in the middle. I think it was, bo no, it was Pudge bottom and Sniper mid lane at one point. Um, and what happened was you yeah. went on them. Your pact ran out, and then you got initiated on, and I think you ended up living both times, but both times it was honestly like due to lack of coordination on the enemy team's part, um, a lot of it. like They didn't just focus you and burst you down. And you have to think about in those kind of times, why wouldn't you just ulti? And it's like, if you're going to kill a target with your ult and gain like nine essence shift sacks doing it, I'm pretty sure that's worth it, right? Like Worst case scenario, you have to wait 60 seconds to fight again, but you have nine essence shift stacks and now you have your ulti again. It's like one of those things where you were going into fights, going on a target, and then not willing to use your ult preemptively. Like, remember bottom when I told you to BKB preemptively? It's like, it's like worst case scenario, that BKB gave you nine essence shift stacks, and there's nobody else there. But you felt 100% comfortable just hitting the pudge. Like, 100% comfortable just hitting him. It's like, it's the same idea with your ult. It's like, if you don't use your ult, and there just happens to be three people there, but in that case, they're like, there were, and you actually knew that, and they go on you, and you end up like the worst thing you can do with slark is go into a fight and die without using your ult like that's like the worst thing so in those kind of scenarios if you're bursting down a target and your ulti will allow you to do that then just use it like don't like don't be stingy with it don't be like like try to be greedy it's like if you can kill a target during your ult and you know that like if it's possible you die if you don't then you should just use it it's not like there's no minimum there's no min maxing here on a hero like slark you just want to make sure you don't die um, you have so many ways to live, so why be stingy with them? You like, you know, why instead of taking the risk of dying, why not just blow them all 
try to kill somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you, you see what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Like, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. You have so many insurance policies. There's no reason to like just hold on to all of them. Um, so, um, you know, I highlighted shopping again, but it's the same idea. Just, uh, you know, it was during the game where like during that fight, like I'm emphasizing that like when there's a fight going on, there is always downtime. Like there's always downtime. There's obviously times where it's like, you know, very hectic and I don't expect you to be able to shop during those, but like all those fights, there was always time where you were looping in and out. And those are things where you should just be able to send the courier to the secret shop with hockeys. Like it should be select courier, send it to secret shop, pick up your item and send it to you. It's like, I was telling you recipe dust, recipe dust, courier, but secret shop. It's like, that should be literally like, like the quick buy, the dust should be in your quick buy already. The recipe was already as well. So you just, just quick two things, send it to the secret shop, you know, fly to you in the midst of the time that the fight's not happening. And like, it's not like a massive thing, but imagine in a fight where like, you know, what if that was a BKB, you know, stuff like that. It's like, imagine if you wish you had a BKB and you didn't have it. Like that can make, that can actually, you know, change games. So, um, just a small thing there, but anything about that whole pounce thing I just talked about, I kind of just went on a random tangent with the shopping, but anything about what I just talked about? Um, I, I the understand the pounce. What, what, okay. what do you mean by that? Okay. Gotcha. Um, so remember top lane at the tower when I told you to dive the pudge and kill him, and then what happened was you ran to the right and um, and uh, ran into like three heroes. I don't even remember if you died, but you like got in a lot of trouble. I think you barely lived through like you got like battle hungered yeah. and shrapnel, and you barely lived because they didn't have detection. Um, the big thing is when you kill a pudge like that. What do you think is going to happen if you go for a dive on a tower like that in a game? Generally speaking, like, what's yeah. the enemy team going to do? They if do you TPN. They're going to react, basically. They're going to run at you. Yeah. So there's, like, there's several things you have to consider. One, where are they going to run at me from? Okay? That's the first thing. So in that case, like, if you really think about it, they're not coming from behind you. You saw them all mid or something. Like, you just seen them mid or bottom or top, I mean. So you know they're not running from behind you. So... You ran right. You ran literally straight into the only place they could be coming from, and you ran into three of them. So that's like a first thing to think about. The second thing to think about is if I get this kill and I back off, um, what are my options? Um, and what I mean by that is, um, you know, there's only two reasons why they didn't save him, okay? There's only two reasons. One, they were late, meaning like they didn't, they didn't quite make it in time, but that means they're all there. So in that case, if they're all there, you want to back off. Two, they were ganking somewhere else. Like, that Pudge was just dumb. You could tell he was dumb, and he was, like, letting you kill him a bunch. But, yeah, two, like, two, they could just be all four bottom. But you don't have a way of knowing. You have no way of knowing whether or not all four of them are top or all four of them are bottom. So by sitting back and waiting, you're literally saying, okay, if they're all four top, I'm going to see them, and I'll just leave. But if they're all four bottom, right after I kill this Pudge and I see four of them show a bottom, what should you do? If four people show up bottom, you just killed Pudge Top. What should you do? Uh, push tower. Yeah, push the tower, right. So, like, basically what I'm saying is you kill that Pudge, and I'm giving you all these options, like, meaning, like, there's only two options, really. They're all either top, because they're all missing. They're all off the map. So there's only two options. They're all top trying to react, but they're late, or they're all somewhere else ganking somewhere else. So you have to kill the guy and then give yourself time to, like, let them tell you what they're doing, meaning, like, show themselves somewhere. So if suddenly... So if I'm telling you that in a decent game, they're all top or they're all somewhere else, and one hero shows top, just one, what does that mean for you? Just one hero shows top. What should you do? Uh, go top. Where? What? Go top and kill that one hero. No, 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 no. I said you're top. You just killed Pudge. Uh -huh. And the, since they're all missing, any decent players, even 2K, they're all all going to be top or all oh, going to be bottom and one hero shows top okay yeah back off because why they're all missing and for they, they're all the, like, the odds are they're all right behind that guy and so what do you do you back off and you wait for the other three to show say those three show mid what do you do if that one hero is still there try uh, harass him yeah harass him kill him go all like you know force reactions whatever but force them back top if all four of them are top, you should probably just TP somewhere else. Like, wait for them to show you. It's like, if you see one hero and you know they're all missing, it's like, you don't just go on them. You, like, you know, you wait for information. The whole thing I'm talking about is, like, once you kill that Pudge and you kill anyone under tower, like, you kill someone under tower, and unless all four of them are showing somewhere, 
or like the only hero not showing is like or the only hero not showing is like a sniper <laughs> it's like you don't care about sniper you like you can just leave anytime you want then you should leave like you should back up and give yourself time to like information collect a lot of players around your level just don't do the information collecting part where they're just like okay i got this kill now what and it's like you know for you you ran straight to the right aggressively where they could be coming from theoretically they could be doesn't mean they are but they could be and in that particular case you ran into three heroes and only survived because none of them had detection and i'm just trying to say like really think about like you know if they're coming where could they come from and you know sometimes you'll be wrong and those are the kind of times where i'm telling you like it's just like in the other examples i gave you earlier in this lecture that i've been giving now is you know it's on you now to think about these situations through so if you're like oh they can only be coming from the right like, they can only be coming from where you ran to. But instead, so next time around, you back up straight. Like, you just leave. And suddenly, you get wrapped on by three heroes and die. It's like, well, ugh, like, if you watch the game back, oh, they smoked and ran straight there, like, from mid lane and ran straight there. So it's like, next time, what you could do is be like, well, if they smoked, they ran behind me. So I'm going to try to be in a place to pop their smoke so that they don't find me. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you'll run into different random things that, you know, go against what you're doing but if you're not thinking about these things and just running to the right and running into three heroes if you really look back on that game that didn't really teach you anything because if you really look at it you could just analyze like yeah they're probably coming from the middle like you know you you see what i'm saying like it could technically teach you something but if you really think about it you could have known that before it happened like yeah you see what i'm saying yeah so like this this is what i'm talking yeah. about where like now it's on you to think about these things it's a lot to think about um, I'm really just telling you things one at a time, and I'm telling you, don't take everything I've told you in this lecture all at the same time, because you're just going to, like, shit your pants, okay? Like, these so are all, like, like, um, like, go ahead. So it's like, uh, practice certain things at a certain time. Yeah, like, so, like, for, like, I'm telling you, every time you focus on one thing, like, for me, it's, like, learning a new hero is probably, like, one of my biggest problems, is every time I focus on learning a new hero, I don't know if you've, like, watched my stream when I'm playing heroes like OD or something, but my map awareness yeah, and my map awareness and my, like, fight presence is just so abysmal because I'm so focused on trying to learn the mechanics of the hero and make sure I'm doing things right on the hero that the rest of my game suffers. And that's just, like, what's going to happen with everything I'm talking about. Heroes, shopping, pulling a 53, you know addressing problems when you're pushing talent, like, you know, like addressing these situations with heroes. So it's like after, like, you know, the first things, the basic things are what you need to get down. These hero specific things are things like the landing stage should be done at the beginning of every game. So like maybe like, like the third or fourth thing you should work on is at the beginning of every game, think about your starting items according to what the enemy heroes are and realize like, man, I didn't have enough regen for Slark when I hit level six. Like before I had level six, I didn't have enough regen. What could I have done differently? Is it how I played the lane? Is it my starting items? Like, you know, that's what you can start doing is every time you play a hero, like that's when you would want to play a hero like five times in a row and see what happens. Like, you know, because that's a lot of that stuff's like hero matchup specific. So you'd want to play the same hero against you know different matchups and see what's happening um but all these things i'm talking about one at a time because if you're trying to focus on starting items shopping faster making sure you're pulling at 53 every time you're just gonna mess it all up you're just gonna like everything's gonna go wrong and it's not like it's because you're bad it's just because no like no human like no normal human being can um process trying to learn that many things at once um so that's what i'm trying to tell you about this um and uh that's that's really the rest of my notes that's all i really got for you but that's like the big thing for you personally is just those like some of them being basic mechanics in terms of like they're not necessarily hard they're just things you have to repeat like do a lot of repetition um and take the time to do so and then the other things like i talked about these conceptual things um that you said you understood and i believe you i'm not like saying you're a liar i'm just saying like you said you understood them so it's on you to think about them ahead of time and it's also on you to think about you know, all these possibilities that can occur when you're diving somebody. Like, like you, I asked you, if you dive somebody, what's going to happen? And you knew. So now it's on you in these games when you dive somebody every time to recognize that's, like, those are the two options. It's not like they're just going to, like, I mean, if they're 2K, whatever, sometimes they'll just abandon the guy and the guy will be by himself, and that's just because he's bad. But, like, any semi-competent team would be trying to save him or be somewhere else. So it's like, if those are your options, then you knew that. So now it's on you to play the game accordingly. Um, and I know I just repeated myself a bit. Um, so any last questions before we kind of wrap it up? Um, 
<laughs> item choices I kind of understand because I've watched your uh, in-depth guide to Slark. Okay. Um, and, and laning stage, I can more or less understand it now. Like, well, at least uh, exerting the dominance and staying safe. Yeah, my question for you is, so like, when you thought about buying a Scotty, do you realize why I told you to buy a BKB? That was something I actually yes, meant to I, talk about. Yes, I realized about. why you told me to buy a BKB. And, like, you get that, like, you, you realized even, like, when you go on that pudge the first time when you use your 10-second BKB, like, how much more you could do just, like, without fear because you had a BKB. And it's like... Yeah. That's why when I look at those kind of games with Slark especially, like I think BKBs just become much better on him because of Echo Saber. Like Echo Saber kind of gives you like half of what Scotty gives you in terms of like it gives you that little slow to, you know, uh, latch onto somebody a little bit longer. And it's like one of those things where like there's so many games where if you're a BKB Slark in the mid game, you're just like almost unkillable during BKB. Or it's like really hard to lock you down and burst you. So it's like one of those things where um, having that ability on Slark, if there's an item you can build that just makes you not scared at all um for any period of time it's kind of like that one game i played against drow and like a couple other really hard single target heroes i built manta ac butterfly and it's like they had a bunch of right click single target heroes and it's like if i ever go in and manta they're just not killing me before i ult like there's no way they're focusing me because they have to figure out which one's real and at that point i've already hit them six times it's kind of like it's just like one of those things where you know it's all about buying yourself that extra bit of time some games it's bkb some games it's like just having enough health because they don't really have like burst damage so having the scotty would be fine sometimes you know it's every game is different um it's just thinking about that so um any last questions other than that or comments just give me a second here right. yeah you have about five seconds and counting <laughs> all right um it's I'm just, just a... i'm just kidding Okay. Oh god. <laughs> Troll. I understand, like, but let's say earlier laning against an axe, and okay. he's... Um, so the best part would be stay under tower and last hit the creeps under the tower without taking too much damage. Yeah. And is there a question with that? Or what are you saying? Mm, no, no, I don't have a question with that. I just need to, like, confirm, like, that. Well... The thing is, so, for approaching a lane against Axe, for instance, like, you're already talking about, the odds are he's pushing the lane, right? So, for you, the goal is to try to fight that as much as possible without taking damage. So, generally, that would mean pulling the creeps away, like, using creep aggro, and then hitting them as much as possible. And what that does for you is, by the times the creeps get into tower range, either one or two of them are dead, or one or two of them are low health, so that when you're under tower, you're taking less damage. Does that make sense? Like, if all the creeps are full health going into your tower, that's, like, maximizing how much damage you're going to have to take under tower. So, in that case, I guess if you're, like, Axe, who's going to push the lane into you and there's nothing you can do about it, similar to, like, a Darkseer, it's, like, your goal is to, like, minimize as much damage as you're taking under tower by getting the lane as low as possible without taking damage. But, like, it's not worth trying to get the lane low if you're going to take damage for it. It's all about minimizing the amount of damage you're taking. Does, does that get what I'm saying? Like, if you're, if you're, to push the lane out, you're, like, fighting the axe and taking three spins, it's not accomplishing what I'm talking about, right? You're not minimizing damage, you're just taking more harass. So, like, if you watch somebody like me, or, you, like, I, you know, I use Arteezy just because he plays a lot of the similar heroes that I do. If you watch us play against a hero that, like, pushes the lane against us, we'll try to fight the lane push as much as possible. Like, we'll try to pull creeps away and hit them in the spare time like you know kite the creeps around and hit them as much as possible it's not like we can stop it but we can minimize this amount of damage we're taking that's all you can do you can minimize it's all about min maxing in the lane every every single hero every single matchup um it's just a, like every single matchup has a different maximum and different minimum you can get away with that's pretty much how it boils down to and some laning matchups are just disastrous but sark against axe is like laneable it's just, like, you're going to get the lane shoved into your tower, so it's really hard to play. Uh, in that kind of lane, I wouldn't really care about boots all that much unless there was, like, an extra support that I'm scared of. I'd mostly care about a poor man's shield and a quelling because poor man's shield blocks the creeps, not, like, not like you know, 100%, but it gives the extra damage block and the extra armor. Yeah. It gives you the extra uh, last hitting power, and the quelling blade makes it easier to last hit under tower because I'm expecting to last hit under tower a lot. Like, that's pretty much what it, you know, what it boils down to. Like, in those kind of matchups. It's all just, like, thinking about how this other lane's going to go. So if I'm going to last under tower, I'd prefer to have a calling blade. And it's not because I'm bad. It's just, like, towers do 100 damage, and I do 60. So I'd like to, you know, I'd like to have a calling blade. So 
Um, any any other questions? Uh, I see you play troll a lot, and uh, yeah, he's, I wish he was good. Uh, you used your range axe to harass people. Yeah. Is that kind of like uh, required? Um, well, on a hero like troll, so the best way I can say it is like. It's all about securing CS, so a lot of times uh, now in the current patch you want to focus on range creeps. Um, so the way I view troll is that like a lot of times when I'm going for a range creep, or even like a melee creep sometimes, they'll go for the deny. Um, so my way of getting the CS over them is to attack and then instantly throw throwing axes, because that makes it so that my attack and throwing axes hit at about the same time, which gives me about 120 damage of last hitting power instead of 45, um, or 47 or whatever. Um, so what that does for me is because if the guy, if you start doing that every time, every time that guy goes for a deny, he's going to think about getting whirling axed or throwing axed and hit. Um, so what you do is you use the throwing axe to get the last hit while also harassing them with it. And then what ends up happening is eventually they're either going to keep letting you harass them or they're going to stop contesting your CS with like so one of the two. Um, if you're a hero with low base damage, you have to figure out a way to how to you know, deal around it, you know, and a hero like Troll, the best way to do that is to throwing axe and attack at the same time, giving you more attack on your last hit power, and it also, you know, it's just like fissuring a creep as Earthshaker in order to also harass somebody. Um, so a lot of times this Troll, like sometimes I'll use it just to hit the guy, but almost every time if you watch me play Troll, obviously I don't play him very much in this patch, but when I use it, it's a way of getting the CS and harassing the guy, and a lot of heroes have that mechanic. Um, it's just a lot of it's different like on Slark a lot of times when you're level six You can just walk up to the wave and packed it while the guy's nearby So you're simultaneously killing creeps and harassing the guy um, You know a lot of heroes have that kind of mechanic a lot of heroes don't as well um, But it's just like every hero is different, but on troll warlord specifically. It's impossible to secure CS by trying to just out CS them with your damage. You hit for 47 <laughs> um, with high damage variance. He hits for like his 47 means he hits for like 38 to 56 if you look at his damage range. Um, but yeah, so that's what I. Do you see what I'm saying there? How it's securing a CS while harassing at the same time? And yeah, that's like. I see, I see. And that's an important part. So you ask, is it important or is it necessary? And it's like the answer is 100% yes, because otherwise you're just going to lose the CS battle if you don't do that um, on a hero like Troll. Like that's how you win the CS battle on Troll. Is by doing that. Uh, another question I have is, uh, let's say Slark um, is, has really bad laning stage, let's say the first 10, 12 minutes of the game, would it be better for him to join the team fights or farm up his, let's say, Shadow Blade? Well, really a simple question, or a really simple answer. Um, and it's a simple answer, but it's not so simple to uh, to arrive at the, conclu the correct conclusion. And what I mean by a simple answer is, can you farm? The answer is yes, you farm. If the answer is no, you don't. Um, what I mean by that is, if they have a matchup where they have a mid laner, where if you go to his lane, say it's an invoker who's level 9 and you're level 7, and you go into his lane, he'll just like hit you with four spirits and bully you away. And if you go to the safe lane, it's a void who's higher level or same level as you. And if you walk up, he can just chrono you and kill you. And if you go top, they have a jungle legion or you know, like some other hero that just won't let you farm against them then, yeah, you just have to kill them. You have to try to kill them, because <laughs> otherwise you can't farm. But if there's a lane you can go to that's free farm, say there's safe laners like a Jug or something, where maybe he can try to harass you, but he's not going to kill you, then you should go farm and like try to get your recovery back. And then the next step you have to ask yourself is, if I fight them, does it have to be like a smoke gank where we're 5 e wanting them, or does can I fight them in a 5-on-5 five -five team fight? It's like, ask yourself what you can get away with. On Slark, on a hero like that, he doesn't want to fight. The only reason you fight a Slark is because you have to, or it's, it's advantageous. Like, it's like a 5-on-2 or something. Um, so in a game like that, if you're like, I'm really far behind, do I farm or do I fight? Ask yourself, can I recover by farming? And it's like, if I go to this lane, what's going to happen? If I go to this lane, what's going to happen? If I go to this lane, what's going to happen? Do they have three heroes that offer solo kill potential, or like a plus one will kill me? Like, all three of their cores plus a support will kill me. If that's the answer, then you probably shouldn't farm, because you're just going to die over and over again. Um, and that's the case sometimes. Like, if you're against a Void Invoker, um, what's another hero that offers solo kill potential on Slark? Uh, Anti-Mage, even. Like, an Anti-Mage plus a support will kill you on Slark. And it's like, if you're against those three heroes, and you're behind, you can't farm. You have to go for kills. And you see what I'm saying? Like, if you make that distinction, it's like, can you farm? 
Yes or no? If the answer is no, then fight. Does that... If the answer is yes, but in the jungle? Say it again. If the answer is yes, but in the jungle. Um, then that's, that's another example for sure. Um, and you have to ask yourself is, um, if I farm jungle, will I be the only one getting farm? I, I think is the big thing on Slark. Because if the rest of your team can farm decently while you're doing that, then yeah, farming jungle is absolutely fine if that's your only way to farm. Absolutely. But like if you're farming jungle, I, I can't tell you how many times of Slark I've noticed this, where like I'll farm jungle and be like, yeah, like it's the only place I can farm, but I'm getting so much farm out of it and I'm going to do it. And then like I really realized after the game that none of the rest of my team was farming. If that's the case, then like it's not enough. It doesn't matter that you're farmed. Slark's not a hero that solo carries the game unless he's really far ahead. Like, if he's the only one farmed on his team, he's just going to get focused and die. Like, that's what's going to happen to a Slark if he's the only one that has solid net worth on his team. Like, he has to have backup. Like, he has to have heroes. He has to have other cores that have good starts or do something in teamfights. And if, like, you know, your Batrider doesn't have a blink or, you know, whatever, like, none of your other your heroes have farm and you're a really farmed Slark because you went jungle, it's not going to work. But if you can farm jungle and, like, one or two of your other heroes can farm lane, then yeah, absolutely fine. Uh, to farm jungle, if that's like the place you feel like you can recover, absolutely fine to farm jungle. There are some games, S Lark and other heroes. You know, I, I harp on people for farming jungle a lot. There are games where you can't farm anywhere else and you can't fight either, so you have to farm jungle. That is, an, that is definitely a definitely an occurrence that happens. Uh, any other questions? That's basically a godsend if Stark has free farm lane. Yeah. In the early game. Yep. And that's why some games, like at Slark, I'll just go hit Jungle Creeps until Shadow Blade. Because I had such a good start that I know like my support Shadow Demon can occupy top lane, my mid laner's not getting shut down, and my off laner is fine. And I don't need to kill any of them. Like I don't need to go pressure somebody. So in that case, that's when it's fine to farm jungle because you're just getting more off the map. Um, and somebody else is occupying lanes. The times when it's bad to farm jungle is when you when nobody is top, for instance, and you could be. Um, and that's when it's bad to farm jungle. Or if you're farming jungle and the rest in your mid laner is getting bullied out of lane, or something like that. You see what I'm saying? How it, it's a lot about the rest of your team? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what, like, because in some games, like, why I get so mad at some of my players, it's like, say, in, like, game yesterday I had, um, or no, two days ago, I was having a really tough safe lane, a really tough mid lane or something, and I had, like, a level 8 yeah. mix in the off lane at 7 minutes. And it's like, there's some games as Nyx where if you're in the off lane, it's perfectly fine to just pressure the safe laner if you're ahead. Like, keep mana burning him, offer kill potential on him. But when I'm g struggling in my mid lane, and my carry is also struggling, and that Nyx assassin who's level 8 just stays top, that's crippling to me and my safe laner. Because he, like, he's a ganking hero that can help us gain leverage in our lane, but he's not helping us when we're getting shut down. It's kind of like one of those things where if, if we were doing well in our lanes, what he's doing is absolutely okay. But if, if, if you're like free farming a lane and the, and, there's, and the rest of your team's having a tough time or you're free farming the jungle and the rest of your team's having a tough time and there's something you could do about it, like meaning like if you helped them, they, 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 they would do better, then you should be there. You should be doing that. You should be whatever, like leave the jungle, leave your lane. Um, that's what it means to rotate. Like that's why you rotate. Like if you can, like if your off laner is getting absolutely nothing and their safe lane anti mage is free farming, and you're a drow and you're level seven, you should just rotate top and take his tower because an anti mage can't stop you from doing that. Your off laner is getting nothing if you aren't there. So by taking his lane, you're not like removing anything from the. You know, you're not taking the off laner's farm because he's not farming it anyways. It's like one of those things where you know it's all about. You see what I'm saying? I hope. I, I'm going to leave it there. Do you, see, do you see what I'm saying there? Like, It's all about thinking about the rest of your team. What can the rest of my team get done? Can they accomplish things without yeah, me? Yeah, I, I see that. Yeah, and that's what jungling is. Because jungling, you're just basically AFK. Basically. Um, and in some game, like jungling gives you a lot. Meaning like it gives you a lot of gold and a lot of farm. Or a lot of XP, I mean. And that's great and all. But if you're crippling the rest of your team doing it, <laughs> it's not okay. You know. So that's uh, pretty much what it boils down to. Uh, so, any last questions before we call it? Um, late game wise, okay. Um, let's say we are the two teams. Uh, we had an a uh, good mid early and mid game. Let's say my team had a early good mid and mid game, which just went really well. But the opponent came back in late game and he had pushed out to we had, let's say, our only out tier four towers and both teams had megas. Okay. And Very I decided specific. to sell my boots 
and by Divine Rapier. On what hero? Star. Okay. And and I know if I bought Divine Rapier, I would be able to kill at least three of my three of the enemy cores, leaving only their support. Is that a good idea? But I would die in the process. Uh, I don't think it's worth ever dying with a rapier on a hero like Slark. Um, I don't think I think Slark's like one of the worst eight rapier carriers in the game um, because he would rather just have attack speed. I think like your stack gain's so shit that your attack speed's never capped out without items that give you attack speed, and you get more damage so, by attacking people. So items like butterfly and moon shard. Yeah, Moonshard, Butterfly, Mjolnir, Refresher Orb, if you already have a lot of those items, like, are the kind of items I look forward on uh, late game Slark. Like that. I, I don't think I've ever bought a Rapier on Slark. Like, that. Like I don't think I've ever had a Rapier that I purchased on Slark. I just, ra mm. like, I, I think Butterfly gives him more damage than Rapier. In most cases. Mm. Like, obviously I'm on your... Playing against it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, no, you, uh, you to I was gonna say, like, obviously, like on the first five hits, your your rapier is gonna give you the most possible damage. But like, like you know, Slark wants to gain essence shift stacks. It's like a Slark with fifty essence shift stacks is like one of the strongest heroes in the game. So in the late game, your goal is to get Thank as many, you. you know, your goal is to get as many uh, essence shift stacks as possible, and that's gone by attack speed. So also uh, Slark does well in long drawn out fights. Yeah, Slark, you want long drawn out fights, and Rapier doesn't tend to synergize with long drawn out fights. Like, you almost don't want to kill them in five hits <laughs> as Slark. You want to kill them in 15 fast. Like, you want to kill them in the same amount of time with 15 hits as it would take to kill them in five uh, with Slark. Uh, you see what I'm saying? You'd rather attack them 15 times. For, yeah, you just want, you want 15 quick attacks that do the same amount of damage as five slow attacks. Is pretty much the best way All to right. approach Slark. Because killing uh, one guy... Go ahead. Go ahead. against uh, Huskar. Uh, I think Slark is weak against Huskar in general, yeah. So does a Huskar try not to pick Slark? Uh, it really depends on the fact... Uh, you have to ask yourself if I... The reason when Slark is good against Huskar, the reason when he is good, is if uh, the supports can't protect themselves, as well as the fact that your team can stall while you're split pushing and the and the Huskar team lacks catch. Like if they have no way to stop you from just split pushing with impunity and they can stop the enemy team from pushing with Huskar, say you have like a Tinker plus E T and they have little catch. Slark's actually really good against Huskar in that kind of game. Because your team can stall while you're just free farming around the map. Um, but the problem is a lot of Slark games, um, like the game, like you start having to fight with your team, like twenty, like Slark against Huskar, you have to start fighting with your team, like sub twenty-five minutes. And even though you're free farmed as a Slark, at twenty-five minutes in, you just don't have enough items to fight a Huskar. Uh, with in most games, but like if you get to like 35, 40 minutes as Slark against the Huskar, you're like really good against Huskar. You just eat all of his stats. Um, as long as you were the one farming. And also, since, like, most Huskar lineups lack catch, because they always have, like, Huskar offers no catch. A lot of times you have an Oracle or a Dazzle who offers no catch. Um, a lot of times you want, like, a team fighting offlaner. So a lot of team fighting offlaners, unless it's, like, a Void, don't really have catch. Like, you know, Tide Hunters don't have catch, stuff like that. Um, but yeah. Basically, is what I'm going to say there. If you're able to, like, Slark in general is bad against Huskar. Um, because you can't fight him with similar farm. You have to have more farm than he does. So you have to have... And by to get more farm than Huskar, um, since Huskar is na naturally going to take your towers, you have to have a lot of time to hit creeps. Is basically what it means. Ah, alright. I, I see. Yeah. Anything else? No, no. I, I don't think I have any other questions. I'm more or less learn what i think i needed to learn i hope you did man uh, that's what i like to hear about coaching sessions so uh yeah man i hope you enjoyed the session and i'll see you later dude yeah thank you for coaching uh, yeah no problem man thanks yeah. for supporting the stream man peace out no problem okay guys i'm gonna quickly uh go to the restroom and we're gonna play some dotes
Okay, let me remove my notes. How's everyone doing? Chair is stream. BSJ is such